Hey everybody, Justin Chamnus here. This is our weekly live stream on Wednesday nights where we're all about helping you get to that first deal or maybe that next deal. You know, sometimes we get stuck a little and we need a little prompt, a little help getting to that next deal. Well, that's what we're here to do. We're here to help you do that. And I'm Justin Chamnus and tonight I've got a very, very special guest. I don't do this very often, but I have somebody on from my local market here. And you guys know that I normally have had, I've had a lot of tremendous guests on this show from all around the country in different eras of real estate. And tonight I'm very, very stoked to be introducing Dan Cohan from the Kansas City real estate market because Dan is, well, you know, you can tell he's a younger guy than me, right? And he's really, really making waves, everybody. He's really getting things done. And I saw that he's getting a couple of deals under contract every week, you know, or, or, or regularly, you know, routinely weekly like this. And I don't care what market you're in. I don't care uh, what age you are or what, what background you are or whatever. To, to accomplish that is, that's, that's quite a tremendous feat. And so I admit my, you know, my eyebrows raised, my jaw drops a little, and I'm like, hey, I've got to get to know this guy because you know what? We can learn something from him, I know. And so he's here tonight. He was very gracious to say yes to my invitation. So I want to introduce tonight Dan Cohan from the Kansas City real estate market. Now, Dan, I, I want you to kind of just introduce yourself. There is a link to Dan's YouTube channel in the description, but tell us a little bit about your background and journey as a real estate investor. What got you started in it? And, and, you know, and how did you get up and going so good? Sure, Justin. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, I mean, about myself. So uh, I'm uh, 23 years old, I'm pretty young, um, and I have been in real estate for just about three years. And uh, before that, I was just, I was in business, uh, marketing and sales background. I was, came from the e-commerce. I did that for about five years. Um, in 2020, I got into real estate and I uh, did that through, I was still working my job. I bought some uh, buy and hold. So my first deal was, uh, was a house hack duplex I bought as a primary residence. And then uh, about eight months later, I bought another turnkey house that I, um, that I rented out. And then, uh, then I got introduced uh, in 2021 to uh, flipping. So, so me and my, uh, my full-time business partner now, um, at the time we were really good friends and, uh, he was actually a real estate agent and was doing that. And then, you know, I had saved up again, a good amount of money from my job. And so we decided to go ahead and do a flip together. I put up the money, he did all the work or actually he managed all the work. Um, but we actually bought that house cash and did the rehab cash. Uh, and we just split it 50, 50, you know, so just like a pretty traditional kind of flip JV. Oh. Um, so we did that one. The, the intent was to burr that property. So, you know, rehab it and hold it. And, um, he was going to keep it and then he was going to pay me out my, uh, what I had contributed plus, you know, half the profit. So, um, that went very successfully, uh, pretty much, you know, almost exactly how we had calculated it would, um, which is, which is rare sometimes. Uh, sure, but right. we, yeah, so it actually went really good. You know, he was pretty much dead on with the ARV and, uh, and, uh, we were able to, to do that. It was actually kind of a tough, uh, not in the rehab, but afterwards trying to get the, the free finance because, uh, he, the lender he had chosen didn't work out uh, the first time. Uh, and it actually, I had two deals that were contingent on the money that I was going to get back from that. Uh, but I managed to patch those together. We got a different lender and, and we were able to close those two deals. So I bought two, seven or five more doors, a, a duplex and a triplex uh, shortly after wow. uh, that would buy and hold pretty much turnkey. They needed a little work, but not, not a lot. Um, and then I, then basically we just started flipping. So we just, that went well. So we flipped, I was yeah. still working and I just, you know, was providing the money. We, we, we ventured into getting, you know, <laughs> some hard money and things like that um to expand and we we did like you know 12 uh flips last year just just uh 2020 you know 2022 just that that way while i was still working so i quit my job in uh september of last year late september uh because basically i was making more money you know rehabbing houses than uh than i was in my job and you know yeah. wasn't taking any time so uh i liked my job worked there for almost five years but you know it just the opportunity yeah. was greater uh and there just wasn't wasn't uh wasn't the kind of runway with a uh, w2 yeah. opportunity there uh, but then you can you can say that again. I mean, and, and there's, there's a lot of people out here watching in my audience. I know that are clocking in, or clocking out, or they're on the salary game, or whatever it is, and they can totally relate. And they want what you're talking about right now, mm -hmm. exactly. And so I'm I, I'm going to try to pull some gold nuggets out of you here this evening for these folks because um, you, you've done some pretty remarkable things in a short amount of time. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, congratulations <laughs> on that. Where, where are you wanting all this to go? I mean, cause sure. you, were, you built a, uh, you built a, a really, I, I can't say a small portfolio cause wh- how many, what, seven or eight houses, nine, how many you got now? So, so now it's rapidly expanded. I actually own, uh, over 40 doors now. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Ooh, yeah, so good, yeah, in, in the last, uh, year it's, it's really taken off. I went full time Went uh, you know, I had some, yeah. you know, my rental income was kind of paying the bills. I was making, you know, three or 4,000 net a month from that. And, uh, you know, with the already flipping, I mean, I was yeah. taken home, you know, I mean, we, we keep a lot of our profits in the in equity, you know, doing a lot of mm-hmm. birth, but, you mm-hmm. know, doing very well there, but I needed, you know, a way to make money, um, you know, make cash. Right. So right. I, I was like, you know, I kind of went into wholesaling, I think the kind of the backwards way a lot of people do. So like most people, they, you know, they don't have a skill really where they can make a lot of money. And so yeah. they, they get into wholesaling to, to get money so that they can do flips and invest and things like that. You know, I kind of had already invested and done flips and then I kind of went into wholesaling cause it's like, yeah a great way to make a lot of cash, um, you know, and with, with very low overhead and you can very rapidly make it and, and, you know, scale it up. So, um, you know, I got started in that and it, I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, I did it like, you know, my philosophy is like, I'm going to do it, figure it out before I really like throw a ton of money or, or stuff at it, you know? So, cause I want to know how to do it and have success before I just, you know, double down because I don't want to be stupid. You know, it's just like, you can, you can do that and then just like, you know, uh, you know, throw money at it and then, and then it doesn't work, and then you know you're throwing money down a hole, right? So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so, uh, what really got me excited was I saw that you are already talking about several different exit strategies here tonight. And when I when I said I got excited when I saw on Facebook you were posting that you were acquiring properties through various strategies as well. Okay, so not just like the one trick pony, like hey, I'm looking for the guy who's going to sell for forty five fifty cents on the dollar. Like I saw that you have some other, you have some other, I wouldn't call them, you know, tricks up your sleeve, but you've got some, you've got some pretty proprietary things that you're doing to acquire these deals. Is that right, Dan? Yeah. I mean, I'm not, you know, I, I do use a lot of different acquisition strategies and also exit strategies. Yeah. Uh, I'm very open and, you know, but I wouldn't say anything. It's proprietary or secret. Oh, I mean, okay. it's all out there. Um, you know, I think there's a few different ways yeah. to do things. I mean, I, and if you're talking about like, I mean, what are you, what are you referring to? Like what kind of stuff I'm buying or, or how I'm, yeah. how I'm finding it or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, great. Um, I'm glad you, you backed me up here a little bit, Dan. Um, what I'm talking about is, is like here in Kansas city, you're acquiring mm-hmm. properties in a geographical circle. So yeah. you're, you won't drive a certain, how far out will you drive from Kansas city? I mean, generally, you know, an hour, hour and a half is my max. We try to keep things okay. within 30, 40 miles, you know, for okay, 30, well, minutes, yeah. okay. So you, you've got a radius here that you're comfortable in. So you're, you're doing acquisitions in the, inside this, this circle here. So what, what are your, what is the deal criteria for you? I mean, uh, we'll talk about how you get, how you get the leads and stuff, but I, I'm, I'm very excited to find out how are you looking at a deal when a deal presents itself to you? Because you're not just looking at it at, as like, Hey, I'm going to make a low ball cash offer 45, you know, 50 cents on the dollar mm-hmm. you know, because that doesn't fit every homeowner. So like, what, what is your thought? Pro- Am I making sense? Your thought process when a deal presents itself, how are you like, because I see that sometimes you're doing a cash offer. Sometimes you're doing something else. That's a little creative, like maybe a subject to, or maybe some kind of owner finance or some kind of an arrangement like this. And I've seen you on Facebook doing, talking about these things. So can you tell me how you approach a deal when a, when a lead lands in your lap? That's like, Hey, you know, we want to talk. We're pretty motivated. And, and, yeah. and, and here's the numbers. Okay. Where does Dan go from there? Sure. So, so my default is that is the cash offer for sure. Um, you know, just the 50 cents, 40 cents on the dollar, you know, cash offer, quick close kind of thing. Um, yeah. you know, that's where I'm always trying to go for the most part. Um, you know, if I can, I try to keep it simple, keep it fast. Uh, you know, and then I think what happens is if they, if they want to do that, you know, then that's great. Um, you know, more often than not, they don't, you know, they don't want to sell cheap enough okay. or, or whatever, you know, just with the, all the leads you get. And so, you know, there's a, there's a, so the next thing would be typically it asks for some kind of payments, you know, which is a seller finance or sub two, you know, generally I'm going to phrase it like, well, you know, I don't know. I don't think, I think we're too far away on price, right. For, for cash. But would you, would you be willing to take payments with a sizable down payment? Okay. Right? Now yeah. you, you throw sizable down payment out there. Cause you're not afraid of a, you're not afraid of the down payment. Well, I'm not. And I don't think like, I think that they don't, they don't know what a sizable down payment is, right? Like you have an okay. idea in your head, like sure. you probably think it's like plus 20%, you know, probably, or something yeah, like that. Or close. <laughs> but, but they don't, you know, a seller doesn't, they might've put 3% down on their house, you know, like $5,000, okay. maybe a lot of money. Right. So it's like, like I've bought two or, you know, two houses that I have on long-term seller finance that I put $5,000 down. 
right? And that was enough spin in the game for them. Like they're not, yeah. they're, they're, they just want enough to where they know you're, you're, you know, for them, they're, you're not going to yeah. walk away. And generally, these are older people that you'll do these with. And so, like five grand for them is a lot more than five grand for you. If that makes sense. I understand. I understand. Awesome gold nuggets there, everybody. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you if you probably want to hit the rewind button because he really just laid out some some really awesome um, tips for you about down payment and how people think about it. And, and then he even gave you the setup question when talking to a homeowner when it comes to transitioning from a lowball cash offer that they're saying no to to a creative solution that they're saying yes to. Right. Right. So, hey, Dan, can you give us another uh, an acquisition story where you acquired a property deal? Uh, can, can you give us another example story? Because I, I, I'm really enjoying that, man. Sure. Do you want it on the seller finance or something else? Oh, you know? you know, yeah, that'd be great if you can tell us, you know, one of those. Because I'm all about creative and, you know, because sure. I, I used to be, uh, you know, an ugly house guy or I thought I wanted to be. And, man, it, it, it's a tough racket just going out there with one, you know, one bullet in your gun. It's like, hey, right. low ball offer. Oh, missed. Uh, low right. ball offer. Oh, missed. Okay. So I'm so stoked about learning more and growing. My audience is very... Very right. in tune to learning new things about how do I get them to say yes to something. Okay, so right. yeah, tell us one of those, man, because I know you got loads of those. Yeah, so I mean, you know, with the sell with the seller finance, with any kind of payments, you know, I mean, that's going to be your second thing that I would go to. Um, and like, you know, for example, we just bought probably honestly one of the best deals we've ever bought. Uh, we bought this triplex. It works on multifamily, you know. So we bought a triplex uh, on contract for deed is, you know, what we did. But it's contract for deed, seller finance. It's literally functionally the same thing. Um, it's it's no different, you know. Um, you don't take title in contract for deed, but it's literally like, like literally I bought a house that a guy had on contract for deed. And like if that you that guy sold it to me, you know, yeah, and he yeah. just went to the guy that the title holder and got basically a mortgage payoff uh, and sold it. Right. So it's exactly the yeah. same. Yeah. So we bought that. So he wanted, you know, it, it basically, the story was he had this triplex severely under rented. Uh, you know, he's renting these units for $300 a month uh, for, you know, two, one bed and one two bed unit and two of them weren't paying. Right. So he's making 300 bucks a month on this building. Okay. And, you know, we talking about price and I'm, I'm talking to him, you know, and, and he wants, he wants $75,000 for this triplex, which is a good price cash, right? It's a good price for this. It's probably worth, Sounds you know, like a great price. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're we're talking about you know probably once it's once it's fixed and re rented, probably one eighty ARV on this on this. Let property. me ask you a question, Dan. Is this is this war zone area stuff, or are you are you kind of all over the place, or both suburbs and and, and inner city, or can you? Mm -hmm. just, I hate to interrupt the story, but yeah. So no, it's it's not on this one. So this is we generally like what I personally buy and acquire is all in suburbs and at least you know C B class areas. Um, yes, you know we do. Now that I found buyers in, in these war zone urban core areas, you know, we do trade those. Uh, we don't generally buy those or flip them, um, but we wholesale them. And, but like this one that I, as an example, uh, it is in uh, Warrensburg, which you're familiar with, I'm sure, but is a kind of a tertiary, you know, rural market. There's a college there, but yeah. it's by no means, uh, you know, a dangerous or bad area. Um, you know, but there is just a lot of, you know, it's more rural and the sellers, are generally friendlier there. Uh, there, there's a good amount of buyers there though, because a lot of people yeah. in Kansas City do buy there, um, and so. Uh, but no, I mean honestly, the bulk of my portfolio is in like is in the Northland. You know, it's mostly B and C class. Uh, you know, good working class and and even better neighborhoods. Great. Um, you know, and we try to stay in the good areas. I mean, if we can, I mean, I know a lot of wholesalers, it's definitely easier to acquire deals in the <laughs> right. urban core yeah. and uh, you know yeah. the 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 rougher spots. But yeah. you know, our philosophy is like. You know, some a lot of those deals. I mean, there's a lot of them that come out. I would probably gamble that most of them never close. Um, you know, because yeah. these guys have them just locked up so high, yeah. and uh, you know, they'll just lock up anything, right? Yeah. So, yeah, you know. So, but the, the ones in the urban core, you know, like we just sold a a, a, a pair of them. You know, and we we made a twenty thousand dollar assignment that we split with another gentleman. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's like a lot of that stuff. Yeah, it might be easy to lock up, but you're gonna have a hell of a time trying to sell it and dispo it. And it's just like not worth it for us. Yes. We'd rather have a harder time on the acquisition and know 100%. Yeah. Hey, if we if it's a good deal for us, we'll buy it. If, if we can't get anyone else to buy it, right. and uh, you know, gives us a lot of flexibility um, yeah. with with the buy. I mean, we you know, and that's the other thing with the local market is like when you are local, you know, you know the market in every pocket and area so well that it's like you can make decisions so much faster than when you're trying to go you know nationwide. You got to reeducate yourself on every you know every deal that comes along. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's get back to that triplex, man. <laughs> Yeah. Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So I built good rapport with that guy and we walked the units. You know, that was actually an incredible deal because the lead came in. One of my bird dogs called him, gave me his number. I called him, set the appointment for the same day. 
Um, that's one thing, you know, you got to be speed to lead on these things. You got to go fast. If yeah. It sounds like a deal, you know, I jump on it as soon as possible. But so anyway, we're talking and, you know, he says the price cash and, you know, maybe a novice would just like, okay, yeah, let's do it. Right. But like this one, you know, our buy box for seller finance or, or any kind of, you know, payments type arrangement is like, we'll buy it and keep it if it's like very turnkey or minimal rehab, like, because on those, it's going to be very difficult to get any kind of secondary financing. Um, and, you know, it's just not, you're going to have more money of your own. You're going to put your own cash to, to, to work it. So, you know, this one needed very little work. Um, and so he wanted, you know, 75,000. That was his price. I'm like, okay. You know, let me think about it. So, uh, I went back, talked to my partners in the car, you know, and I came back to him like, Hey, I think I called him on the phone or something like that. It was right after. And I gave him an offer. I was like, you know, we can do 55,000 cash or we can do 75,000 on payments. All right. And, and I tell him the payments, I was like, we'll put $5,000 down. Wow. And we're going to give you, we're going to give you, uh, I think it worked out to like $292 a month or, uh, you know, on a 20 year AM at a 10 year balloon. So 0% interest. And this is in okay? Warrensburg? Warrensburg. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And I've, I've done one of these in North Kansas city, you know, yeah. like it's, um, they can, you can do them all over the place, you know, but yeah. like, uh, but, and he's like, you know, he, he contemplated it okay, for a okay, day. Hold, hold on. Cause I, people, people from all, all around watch, watch this and they don't know that Warrensburg, like you said, is a college town, yep. literally 45 minutes from my front door. Okay. Right. Not considered Kansas city proper, not even considered part of Kansas city Metro. Okay. There are cool pockets like this. Listen, that's what he's saying. I found me a little honey hole over here, everybody. And they're, uh -huh. he's talking about an incredible triplex deal. The guy wanted 50K. Uh, well, he was going to make a 50K offer cash. Instead, he offered 75K owner finance. A no, mm -hmm. a no brainer for Dan, probably in either right, direction. Right. right. Oh, okay. I'm yep. sorry. Go ahead, Dan. I just wanted people to realize how incredible this really is. I mean, these deals are there. Yeah. No, oh, they're everywhere. You know, this, this whole illusion that there's no deals and that the market's too saturated is a, is a crock, you know, like, I mean, I'm literally, I just went on, I just went and saw, uh, four houses today, yeah. you know, four off market okay. sellers that the guys are all wanting to sell at great prices are pretty good, you know, where I can work them down. I mean, like it's every day I'm going on appointments, you know, it's, it's, That's great. it's not, you just got to go hunt for it. You know, it's like, it's, yeah. you're not going to, if you're just sitting there watching the deals come through Facebook, you know, they're all marked up to hell. You know, you're never going to get a good deal just sitting there, right? Like if all the good deals are already sold or you got to go out there and find them, yeah. you know, okay. so. we got to talk about that now, man, <laughs> Dan, you're <laughs> awesome, dude. You're a lot of fun. Uh, I, and you know, talking about like, you've really given us a lot tonight, man. And, I, and I'm really grateful for it because You've, you've, you've given us some insights about locating deals and there's little honey hole pockets of places that you maybe aren't, you're, maybe you're overlooking out there, everybody. Mm -hmm. But then not only that, but you know, not, not being just pigeonholed into the low ball cash offer, but being a little flexible and creative in your solutions that you can offer homeowners and offering them more than they would maybe expect in a cash offer. Wow. That's <laughs> It's crazy, but it worked. Right. So what, what kind of a rent are you going, what, what's your extra strategy on this triplex, Dan? Sure. So we're, we're rehabbing it just needs a light, you know, turnover. Um, we'll probably put 25,000 renovations across three units. Um, and then it'll rent for, you know, probably the whole thing will rent for about seventeen eighteen hundred dollars $1,800 a month uh, with a, you know, $292 principal only payment. Right. So like, you know, yeah. so we'll have insurance and stuff. probably be netting, you know, probably close to a thousand dollars a month in free cash flow, you know? Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, 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 yeah. After, you know, vacancies and blah, blah, and all that, right? Well, and, and we'll pick up, you know, we'll pick up with like $100,000 in equity, you know? Yeah, that too. Right. right. Incredible so. deal. Incredible. Well, I would call that a home run, Dan. For sure. <laughs> That's a good story, dude. Let's mm -hmm. talk about how you're getting getting leads, man. Because sure. you said, you, you, you know, um, and I, you don't have to give us all your secrets, man, but I <laughs> I know you're giving us some good stuff sure. right here, but... You know, you're, uh, you just let the cat out of the bag a little, you know, so to speak, that you're going on appointments every day, and I know you're working hard, and I was texting you today about the session here tonight, and you're out at viewings today, and looking at properties, and making offers, and seeing if you can get deals. Can can we talk a little bit about how you're getting leads in a local market, and can we talk a little bit about KPIs, or in other words, like, sure. you know, you're making offers, and all, are all of them saying yes, or like, you know, just a few, or like, you know what I mean? What, what should our expectations be if we want to be Dan? Right. Um, so yeah, you're going to have to put in a lot of work. <laughs> it's, it's oh, not really, <laughs> oh boy. Uh, yeah, I mean, but you know, our strategy is the backbone has been just a lot of calls. Uh, you know, we make a lot of phone calls. It's, it's, uh, that's how I got started. And, you know, I have a caller now and I just hired an acquisitions manager and I have a few, you know, other 
bird dogs slash novice wholesalers that are out there calling and we work, you know, they basically bring me deals. Um, we just added on, uh, we've been doing mailers for uh, a good, pretty much the whole year. We've just gotten a couple deals from that. Um, and then, you know, we just started PPC, uh, Google PPC, you know, pay-per-click ads like a couple weeks ago and gotten a few leads from that. We haven't converted anything, but, uh, you know, some of them have been solid. Mm. Um, you know, and besides that, honestly, you know, I get a lot from my network because, uh, I'm, you know, posting a lot and I do a meetup every month in Kansas city, a free, free networking meetup with a speaker. And then, you know, and now honestly, my secret strategy is I've been hosting these how to wholesale classes, um, for people that want to learn how to wholesale. And, you know, my, to be totally honest, you know, I do that. I charge like $79 for it for it okay. to, you know, A to Z, very yeah. you know, thorough. And I, I'm not very transparent with people. Like, you know, I'm like, Hey, you know, I've got a mentorship, but my goal with, with the whole thing is that, you know, I want to teach people how to wholesale effectively and get good deals so that they bring them to me and we either wholesale them together. Or I buy them. Right. And like, I have Bingo. all these people out there that are looking for deals and, um, you know, I don't need all the money, right. I don't need all the pie, but there's so many deals out there. Like I can't, I'm never going to find them all myself, mm -hmm. you know, but if you've got an army of, and, you know, people that are out there looking, they run across something and, you know, oh, well, who's the most competent person I can think of? Well, it's the guy that taught me how to do it. You know, I'm going to I'm going to call him up and have him help me work on it. And, you know, then I'll help him close it, help him do it and uh, make sure the price is right and we'll all make money. So, yeah, that's great. You so know, leveraging the network. I mean, I think social media is heavily underutilized. It's not that hard. You know, you just post what you're doing all the time and and uh, mm -hmm. just people seeing you, they'll naturally send you stuff. So, yeah, and that's. Very, very interesting. And um, I know another fellow having great success with the same technique, man. <laughs> and I think it's an awesome technique. It's super brilliant. And if, you, if you're out there listening and you're in a local market that you want to tap, I think it's important to start reaching out. Hey, look what I'm doing. I reached out to Dan, you know, because, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? All right, because I see something in Dan that, hey, you know, I need to get connected with that guy because maybe I'll bring a deal to Dan. Hey, you know, maybe I will bring a deal to Dan. Is that cool, Dan? Do it. All Absolutely. Right. <laughs> All right. See, now we're cooking with grease. All right. You can do the same thing in your local market out there, everybody, and mix it up. So let's let's go out there and uh, and start some meetup groups or maybe start a Facebook group or start a you know a local a Zoom meeting once a month or a local thing at Denny's. You can mm -hmm. do that too, right? You know, hey, where do you do your local meetup at, Dan? Um, it varies by location. I've actually just been doing them at the library uh, the last couple. The library community room, it just costs seventy five dollars and you know, it's, it's basically almost free and, uh, oh, I have a couple sure. sponsors that help that and I bring food in and, uh, you know, we've, we've gotten 60 ish people there a lot of times, you know, and they're all high level guys. So, right, right. but it really helps that's build great. your credibility and relationships. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. cool. That's awesome, man. I, I saw that. And, uh, I was wondering, um, is that something that you're going to keep localized? You know, because we're, we're talking about now we've kind of crossed the bridge a little bit from real estate into, you talking about like, I'm going to bring it up. You didn't bring it up, Dan, but I'm going to bring it up education because you're mm -hmm. educating these folks in your local market sure. for the end goal of doing joint venture partnership deals with them, um, yep. taking these strangers, making them acquaintances and then friends. And now we're business buddies and we're making money and you know, all that's brilliant. Do you have a bigger, grander idea of more than just Kansas city, Dan? Sure. Absolutely. I mean, I love to work with, you know, have a bigger event, you know, work with people around the country. I mean, uh, you know, I have done JVs. I like right now we're about to close one in Florida and that's just cause guy saw me on social media, brought me a deal and I helped him work it. And you know, that's going to be a $10,000 check for me, you know? Um, so I'm not, you know, but I think, you know, I, I, I do want to go, you know, bigger of course with the, with the, you know, my YouTube channel, you know, Dan Cohan on YouTube, uh, share all my stuff. Um, but like, I think, uh, that people have this, there's a fallacy to an extent that like, maybe when you get to higher levels of wholesaling where you just enter doing so much volume that it's you, you tap out your lead flow. But like most of the viewers that are watching this probably like you're going to be the most effective locally. Like there's so many deals there, you know, that, that you can work that uh, like, there's no reason to try like, I, I'd rather build a, a very high degree of influence and, and uh, uh, you know, in my local market where I'm going to have all the, all the buyers and all the other wholesalers yes. working and, and all the knowledge is, and the yes. lenders and all the infrastructure is already right. The contractors are already all here to where every deal that comes through, it's like so much easier of a decision. I already know who's going to buy it. Yeah. I already know who's going to lend on it, you know, and I know the numbers like the back of my hand and it's just like, it's simple. Right. And yeah. it's like, and then I can just continue to double down, double down, double down. Like, I'm not trying to be a, you know, digital nomad, you know, go sit on the beach and have my, my global reach. Right. Like there's no need. I can become multi multi-millionaire just you know, mm -hmm. working these deals in Kansas city. Right. right. Yeah. For now. 
that's wisdom, everybody. That's wisdom. You, I talk a lot about uh, a marketing thing that I do. That's that's I go to forty six different states, but I always try to tell people, hey, that's just one thing that I do because I don't want to forget my home. Okay, my local market because there are relationships here in my local market that have made me countless amounts of money, and 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 just requiring effort as little as sending a text, like. I'll give you an example. I got an email from somebody saying, hey, listen, I've got this deal in Kansas City. Do you know of a buyer that might be interested? Oh, well, hold on. Let me send a text to someone. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, snap. We're making money again. Okay. See, that's the power of the local market relationships that Dan is talking about. Development. Like I think he said he's got like there's a power in this local market in, in building something there too. Okay. So while you may be doing something, if you follow some of my tips somewhere other than home, you're, like he said, your home is where you can really, really develop an empire. You can develop mm -hmm. a, a kingdom for yourself. Uh, you can develop a safety net of relationships of people that will help bail you out when you get in tight spots. Is that right, Dan? Have you ever been in a tight spot? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, thankful I've been able to keep myself pretty good. But, you know, sure. it, it definitely is just real. You know, like, I mean, the one time where I was really hard up to get this refinance done and I called the local bank relationship I had and he was able to do a loan, you know, in two weeks, uh, basically, you know, on top of Christmas because I had that relationship and he knew who I was, knew I was good for it. And, uh, you know, just as one example. I, so that's a good example. I, I want to ask a couple more questions here before we, we wrap up probably, but, um, sure. number one, um, I want to talk about real estate markets being cyclical and there's a lot of talk about crashes and not crashes mm -hmm. and the prices going up and supply and demand and, Mm -hmm. There's a uh, six and a half million sh houses short and then the buyers and the interest rates and oh my goodness, oh my goodness, people get frozen in fear. Right, right. So what is, what's your approach, Dan? How do you see things? Oh, I'm glad, you know, I'm glad everyone's frozen in fear because, you know, the, the real, the people that know what's up are going to, there's more deals for me, you know, like, I mean, especially as a wholesaler, like you're just working in the sliver, you know, you're in the wedge. So it's like, no matter if the price is, if the price is 200,000 or 20,000, right? Like you're just buying it cheaper or buying it higher and selling it for more, you know, it's just like, regardless of if the market crashes or if it goes up or whatever or down, you know, it really doesn't matter uh, because there's always going to be distress. You know, there's always going right. to be death, debt, and divorce, you know, and, and neglect and, and it doesn't matter, you right. know, so there's always going to be deals no matter what. Well, let me, let me say it like this too, you know, from an example you gave um, in a market that's up or a market that's down, what market is there that a triplex owner financed for $75,000, a couple hundred bucks a month in principal only payments what market is that not a good deal? Somebody, anybody. And I just, and I did that a month ago, you know, <laughs> right. so it's good. Bad, I mean, these deals ugly, are out it doesn't there. matter. That's a great deal in any market. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, don't get me wrong. Like, you know, there are certain things right now, like to do like burrs, um, you know, which I've done a lot of, uh, it's very challenging right now, you know, because the, just the interest rates sure. where they are and the prices where they are, it is, it's yeah. almost impossible to make any, any single family house, you know, cash flow at these rates. Right. And so we're just not really doing them. You know, we're just doing more wholesales and more wholesales really. Um, but, but it doesn't necessarily, but we're still doing the same amount of deals or even more deals. We're just, we're just doing a different exit strategies, yes. uh, than we would, you know, and maybe in the market where we were at, you know, three, 4%, 5%, it was working great. Right. Yes. Um, but now with high interest rates, we're just doing more turns, you know, we're not holding stuff as much. So, so what Dan's saying is, is because prices are high and they are, and because the interest rate is high and it is, He's had to change. He said he's changing his exit strategies to suit the market conditions, but that doesn't change deal flow. Everybody, oh my gosh! I just want to ring a bell, you know, or hit a gong, <laughs> something because uh, that was great, Dan. Very, very good. So, you know, a couple things that pop into my head though before <laughs> I was going to wrap sure. up here, but you were saying earlier that you're working a number of strategies in the local market to produce a, a number of leads that come in on, on a daily basis. And one of those you said was a lot of calls. Can you, can you share yeah. us the lists that you're calling? Are these magical lists or are these just a the normal list that pretty much anybody can get Dan? And what are they? If you sure. don't mind telling us. For sure. Yeah. I mean, they're just a normal list. I mean, it's just, you know, government lists. We call, you know, pre foreclosures, foreclosures, probates. I mean, we have co-violations. Uh, we do have a driving for dollars list, which, you know, I don't know if it's secret, but, you know, we've gotten those leads by driving. Okay, uh, yeah, I see a driving you know, for dollars so. list is kind of secret, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, it takes some work to put together, you know, but I mean, honestly, you know, those those deals are uh, good, you know, if it's just you can get them sometimes, but I mean, you're they're low motivation a lot of times. I mean, honestly, a lot of the good deals like have come from this 
you know, I have this, this bird dog wholesaler that sent me deals. Literally his strategy was like, he would just go on Google maps, right on dry, just Google street view. And he would literally just look at every single house, put it in for, you know, true people search. And he would call every single house on the whole street. Wow. And like, that's how you get deals. Yeah. It's just, you go to a semi distressed area and you just call every single house over and over again until he got, you know, somebody interested. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, wow. That's, that's a level of hustle that most people lack though. Right. right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So yeah, th these, these lists, so, um, everybody can get, and, and because of that, you're still saying though, that between you here in my local market, between you and Michael Frank, do you know him? Michael Frank. Oh yeah. I know Michael Frank. <laughs> are you guys leaving any deals for the rest of us? Uh, because of the oh, foreclosures and the, you know, you guys are, you guys are out there door knocking and hustling. Is there stuff for me? Absolutely, man. I've got a list. There's over a hundred something wholesalers in Kansas city, wow, that's you great. know, and and I, I and I work with them. I just bought we just bought two deals from another wholesaler, and we literally sold them two weeks later to somebody for forty thousand more. So, wow. you know, like I, I buy stuff from other wholesalers still. You know, just if the numbers make sense, yeah. it makes sense. You know, yeah, absolutely. That's mm -hmm. all part of that networking and just being a so being present in your social in the social uh, in your local market and, and and yeah, just making relationships with people. I've made more money sitting at Applebee's or Chili's or something like that on a Friday night when somebody just texts me and says, "Hey, I got a deal. Can you help me with?" Man, <laughs> wait a minute, honey. We're hey, I'm making money at Apple Applebee's or whatever. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's so cool to to do that. Somebody wants to know what library you're meeting at every month. Um, yeah, we've been meeting at the uh, it's the Gladstone Antioch Library. If you guys look me up on Facebook, uh, you know Daniel Kohanowitz is my name. Um, which I'll try to put in here or something, but uh, you know, it, just Dan Kohan. Look me up on Instagram and go to my Facebook, and uh, there's a link tree there. Or YouTube, there's a link tree, and you can find that. But I put it out every month, and uh, we usually meet on the second or th or the third or fourth Wednesday of the month. All right, I'm gonna try to change the. Uh, there it is. If you're looking for, um, I think on Facebook it's just Dan Cohan. Is that right, or is it Daniel? Yeah, I got two. Either works. Okay, so yeah, uh, so go to Facebook and search him, everybody. But if you want to look in the link in the description, there is a, the link to his YouTube channel. I do recommend mm -hmm. that, especially if you're interested in being a kick-ass real estate investor. Uh, if, if, okay. if you don't want to be a, a kick-ass real estate investor, you, you might not like his content because it's pretty kick-ass. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So check him out. Uh, I'm definitely following him. Um, if you've got a last-minute question, go ahead and throw it in the chat here um, before we wrap up, everybody. And I'll throw it up on the screen. If you got something for Dan, go ahead and put it here. In, put it in the comments where you're watching or or the live chat, and I'll throw it on the screen. But um, <clears throat> you might see me uh, even, Dan, at the next one. You might. Yeah, I'd love to, love to meet you in person. Yeah, that'd be great. You're always welcome. I'd like that, dude. I, I really like you. you got a great uh, vibe about you. It's really cool. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, so if, if last question here that comes to my mind is, is if I'm a new guy, yeah, no matter what age I am, doesn't matter, and I want to get started, and I am absolutely starting from scratch, where do you suggest, because you've given me a lot of inspiration tonight, really, but where, where do I begin? Because... Um, there's a lot of voices out there telling me, hey, start here, do this, start here, do that, sure. you know, and I get confused and I got shiny object syndrome, maybe. Sure. And, uh, you know, Dan, you got me really excited tonight, but I'm scared that this is just another thing that's going to lead me down the, the, the maze where there's no cheese. Mm -hmm. uh, where, 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 what's your best advice for me, man? Can you help me? Sure. A lot of people ask me that question. Um, Good. You know, uh I, uh, to give you more and lead to a more in depth answer, I'll give you an answer and then kind of give you a lead to a better answer. Um, but the lead to the better answer is I did make this course and there's a recording. It's just like a two hour masterclass on A to Z, how to do stuff. It's my whole process broken down. If you guys send me a message, I'll be happy to send you that recording. Um, okay. That's a heck of but, an offer. Thank you for that. Yeah. I'll send it to you for free. You know, just, it's a, it's, I charge $79 to the people that come, but you know, I'll give you the recording and it has everything you need wow. to, uh, to understand and get started. Wow. So, Whoa, uh, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? I like that. You know what? What a solid dude. Thank you, Dan. So that, well, that's an incredible offer. If anybody wants to take him up on that, I, I'm definitely, uh, I'm going to check out more. I, I, I think I'm going to come next time, man. Just to, if you don't mind, awesome. I don't <laughs> I'd love for you to come. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to pay the money and I'm going to go and everything. So, uh, but the, you know, the, the class the, the meetups free, you know, the class is, is, is you can come to, you know, it's paid. Oh, okay. But, okay. Uh, I see. Yeah. yeah the, right. the meetup is, is just a, you know, networking meetup and right. I have a speaker and stuff, but, yeah, I mean, the thing that I, if somebody, you know, if I was to tell me uh, what I would do again, I mean, I wouldn't do it too much different, but I would just pick something, you know, probably if you're dead broke, getting into this, you know, I would, I would cold call and, or I would door knock, 
you know, and I would just get a list of leads. You can get them for free. A lot of, you know, look up how to use chat GPT, how to get a list or something, you know, it's, it's not that complicated. And I would just commit to taking the actions to door knock and, and call, you know, if I'm calling, I'm calling, you know, minimum hundred people a day. And if I'm door knocking, I'm probably door knocking, you know, 20 doors a day. Um, and it can take a lot of reps, you know, it's going to take hundreds of calls and dozens or, or hundreds of door knocks to get a deal, but you know, you will get one if you do it enough. Yeah. And that's, I think the difference is just the amount of work. Everyone's trying to look for the silver bullet. And there is no silver bullet. This business is dead simple, and uh, it's just a matter of getting a lot better at it. Yeah. Would you say this? Yeah. Would you say this business has got a lot of routine and boring parts to it? Once you develop the skill sets and so on and so forth, hundred <laughs> percent. It's it is boring. You know, it's just like uh, it's not fun all the time. You know, right. I mean, it, it has a good amount of variety, but sure. it uh, you know you just have to do the menial work. Still, you know, you have to make the calls. You have to call back the leads. You have to knock the doors. Go to the appointments. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a lot of repetition, but and it, it sometimes you feel like you're wasting a lot of time, but you just have to know that, you know, whether it's this appointment or the next one or the next one, you, you will get deals, yes. you know, you'll get better at yes. it and you will get deals. And it doesn't, I think the thing about it is it, like, it doesn't take very many deals to make a lot of money. Yes. You know, like, I mean, if you just will do one $10,000 assignment a month, you know, you're in the top 1% of, of yeah. earners, you know, you're making $120,000 a year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. But <laughs> You know, to do that, you might have to work full time the whole month and, and get like a thousand no's, you know, to get that one. Yes. Right. But I think that's where people, they, 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 they drop off because they just don't understand that it's a numbers game and there's yeah. just, you have to take a lot of action to get to have success. Another thing so. I see people do, Dan, is they get a deal under contract and they stop and they say, oh, I finally arrived and I got a deal yeah. under contract and I'm going to, this is it. This is the one. And then they go to marketing it and then they, they somehow, <laughs> they somehow stumble on that one. And it's mm -hmm. devastating to their lives because they were all of their eggs were in this one basket. How many deals do you try to keep going, Dan? Or like, can you talk a little bit about your KPIs, your numbers, a little bit too? Is that okay? Sure, sure, sure. So it's changing, um, you know. But like, you know, we have a list, and our our uh, if I had a dialer, you know, I mean, our dial our guy, I have a full time cold caller, okay. and he makes, you know, about fifteen hundred calls a day, fifteen hundred dials a day. Okay. Um, you know, if I'm manual dialing, I, I want my guy to get, you know, at least 50 to 100 dials a day. How, how um, often do you have to circulate the same data because of being local? Every day. Every day we're calling the same numbers, you know, wow, there's not very many pickups, you know, yeah. so it's like uh, every day, you know, there's there's really not a lot of like good leads that are happening every day uh, and every week. So we're, you know, you're calling a lot of the same and it's a follow up. Like, you know, for example, I have a CRM of, of warm leads that, uh, have their different levels of interest, you know, but like I'm, I'm clearing them out every day. I'm calling them back at every day or every week or yeah. every month, you know, yeah. until they're. And wow. so like a lot of it is a lot of the calls are to, to the same people over and yeah. over again, you know, Old nuggets, man. Um, but yeah, I mean, every lead, you got to really work it. I mean, you know, I, I would say that most, depending on where it comes from, but like, you know, most leads that I've converted, I mean, I've talked to dozens of times, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, okay. and, and to get them to actually work. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's like, you're not, it's very rare that you call somebody, they have a price that's good, you go to an appointment and you close, yeah. you know, it's like, it, it does happen. Yeah. And I have had deals like that, but those are the, the rarer ones in this game. Right. right. So the follow-up is important in this game. 100%. Yeah. And that's great. And you, I like that you said that the leads are not, there's not a lot of great leads right now. You know, that's, you're saying there's not a lot of great leads right now, but then you're also saying I'm still getting deals. So Mm -hmm. The point is, is that you're making deals work with leads that maybe aren't as good as you wish they were, but your follow-up game is strong. It's not, your follow-up game's not falling off. <laughs> right. That's awesome, Dan. Hey, somebody yeah. wants to know, do you ever do lease option deals? I'm a big lease options guy. Sure. And, sure. you know. You mean like on the back end or the front end? Yeah, that's a great question too, Dan. I don't know what this person means, Marty. Um, I'm assuming acquisitions, but I know that exit strategy as lease options, you acquire a property through subject to, you sell it to somebody, or you know, you're know you doing a lease option as an exit strategy, putting someone in the home. Uh, that all makes a lot of sense, all right? But are you ever acquiring deals with lease options at all? Sure. Really? So I haven't done that exactly yet. I have, uh, I we did buy an apartment building recently, a 2016 apartment. And uh, initially that was the plan with the owner was to buy it on a lease option. Uh, we were going to put... It was about a million dollar apartment, you know, and we were going to put about three thirty thousand down and then pay him basically 7% interest on the balance and for two years. And then we would pay him off with the loan. But, uh, and, and he didn't want cash at the time. Like he did not want to sell that property outright because he didn't want to pay the taxes. I see. Uh, but what ended up happening is that he found a property he could 1031 into. And so we ended up buying it conventionally. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but yeah, I would definitely do it. You know, I mean, if the numbers work, you know, I would 100% do lease option. You know, contract for deeds very similar. Yeah. There's a seller finance. It's very honestly, it's all yes. extremely similar. Yes. It's just the technical words on the. It's basically the same thing. Yeah. You know, it just the words on the contract. Right. But fun, and from a day to day, you know, operational cash flow standpoint, it's almost the same. Yeah, it, I agree 100%. That I'm glad you said that. Um, so you, what determines what strategy? The the homeowner, or you just draw one out of your hat? Yeah, so a lot of times it's the it's the owner and it's the property. I'd say the the motivation and the what they're willing to sell for mm -hmm. is you know ninety five percent of it. Um, but if it's like for us, you know, our criteria is if it's a like on multifamilies, it's really great. But if it's like a, a nice house that needs little to no work and um, that we want to hold in our portfolio, um, I'm probably going to push honesty more for that that payments option. You know, yeah. whether it be lease option right. or seller finance and sub two, because yeah. that you know like if I can acquire a property with a bit of equity, that's going to cash flow right now uh, with very little money out of my pocket, you know, that's mm -hmm. going to try to do that all day, you know, it's right. just, uh, but, but if it's something that's like, you know, your destroyed house or your yeah. standard, you know, distressed house situation, like I'm probably not even going to, it's not even going to be an option for me, right. you know, like as, as a, as, cause there's no point. Cause it's like, if you do something on payments, mm -hmm. you're going to have to bring so much cash to the equation that you're, you're going to wonder like why I should just got a loan for this. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause it's like, there's no, you have so much equity out of your pocket that having low payments doesn't even matter. Cause you've already, you've invested so much money that your cat, your, your cash on equity return is like going to be super low if you do that. Okay. I, I, yeah. I'm following you. And I want to, I want to recap for everybody that's listening again real quick, because you laid out some pretty awesome things here tonight. And I want to grab something you said earlier and pull it into this part of the conversation, which is when you're talking to a homeowner, you, you've got a lead, you've been following up with it, following up with it, following up with it. And, and the guy is maybe not interested. Maybe you can't make the numbers work on a low ball cash offer because it's a local market. Dan, you're telling me that your default then is, well, let's try to see if a contract for deed or an owner finance scenario will work because that makes more sense to own the property rather than to do a lease option in the local market. However, if the homeowner or the property owner were interested or open to a lease purchase and the numbers make sense, he's open to doing that in the local market. I'm going to guess that if Dan was going to do a lease option in this local market as an acquisition strategy, it would probably most likely be a sandwich lease option because that's probably the most profitable you probably wouldn't assign it away as a first option. Your first option would probably be, hey, can I sandwich lease option this one? And and then if you didn't think it was a good keeper, you'd want to get mm -hmm. rid of it or assign it to a tenant buyer or somebody and just walk away sure. from it. Is that, is that right, Dan? Um, so yeah, as of now, we've just gotten renters, but I but I definitely would, you know, sell it on, like you say, on a, on a lease option or on a contract for deed to someone else. Um, you know, I have a house in mind right now in uh, KCK that I own, which is a, you know, it's like a CD market. Uh, and, and I bought this, one of our first burrs and, you know, it's an older house. And like, I just, I've had it for about a couple years and I don't really know if I want to keep it for a long time. And so I may just end up selling it on a, on a lease, you know, mm -hmm. and now I can get a down payment and then I won't have to, you know, get the cash flow and then I, but I won't be responsible for the repairs and, and stuff down the line. Right. Uh, well, uh, last question here, Dan, and I'm very grateful that you shared all this with us, man. We've been here almost an hour, and and I yeah. really I'm grateful for you, man. Thank, thanks for being here. Um, is is there any any last thing that you you want to share with us before before we call it an evening? Anything, any books or courses, uh, anything that you want to send us to, or or anything, anything? The, the floor is yours, Dan. I'm very I'm so yeah, honored to have met you tonight, dude. I'm I'm really stoked about knowing you. You're a cool sure. dude. Th thanks for doing this with me. Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, I would just point you towards. Uh, you know, I, like I say, I'll, I'll give you this, this, uh, you know, free wholesale masterclass, just get, hit me up on Facebook, send me a message, say, Hey, I, you know, I saw you on the stream and, uh, I'd like that recording, you know, and I'll shoot it over to you. And that has a lot of resources in it. Um, that again, if you watch that and you know nothing about wholesaling, you're going to come out there ready to start taking action and have a good, good, uh, you know, plan and a lot of strategies to use. So it's great. Thank you so much yeah. for being here tonight, Dan. You've been a real blessing to us. Hey, you're, you're, a, uh, I might be your number one fan here in Kansas city now, dude. So, uh, so anything that you need in Kansas city that you think that maybe, uh, Justin might be able to help, you know, just, just hit me up, man. Cause I'm your buddy now, man. I, I appreciate you, dude. Well, Thanks for being here tonight, Dan. We'll, we'll see you again next time, dude. Bye-bye. All right. We'll see you guys. Thank you so much.